Let's talk about voxels. So voxels, they are not like polygons. The voxels, they have a matter inside. They have essentially like, like a point cloud. And you can see that you are in the voxel mode if you see that the layer is, has, has V. If I click on S, it will become a surface, like a polygonal model. And I'll then click on that again, it will become a voxel again. And then we'll talk more about surface mode uh, later. Here, I really want to demonstrate the voxel height tool. And when I press E, I have this box which allows me to pick different options. So I will go pick a rectangular, and then I want to activate symmetry. I'll go for four-sided symmetry, and then I can dra uh, drag a rectangular box. It will cut through. If I drag it and then press space, it will be able you will be able to move this around. So right now it's like cutting through the mesh, but then if I press Control, it will start to unhide the mesh. So I'll do this, and maybe I need to activate another symmetry mode. So I'll do this, or maybe I'll just change the camera angle to get a crisscross angle. And maybe I switch to a circle, maybe try to get a few holes here. So this is my favorite tool to showcase the new 3D code users, because as you can see, without much training, you can start creating really complex shapes in a matter of seconds. Problem with voxels, it's hard to get a clean cut. You can see the jagged line going across. The way to fix it, you have to increase the density of the layers, and essentially increase the amount of the points you have there. And the density you usually can see here, it's like double X right now. So if I go right now and in the bottom, I click resample and I start dragging the slider here, it will resample and make it denser. However, we are going to run into a different issue. You can see it's just unheat everything. And the only way to delete all the data that was been hidden is essentially to convert it into a surface layer and then bring back it into a voxel layer. So then I go into resample again and I have a hotkey here, Control D. Control D is the same as increase divisions in ZBrush. Uh, just my favorite kind of hotkey for that. As a long studying ZBrush user, still to the day. And that smooths it out a little bit. To smooth it out a little bit more, we can use a button called Smooth All. And if you put it on a hotkey and run it a few times, you will be able to smooth it all con continuously and help to remove some of the jaggedness that we had before. I would still say that getting super sharp creases is really hard with voxels. You have to kind of jump into like really high polygonal count, 20, 30 million per object. So beware of that. Another tool that we have that almost the same as voxel height, it's a cutoff tool. Before I start doing, using cutoff tool, I will just duplicate this layer. Shift T, uh, my hotkey for that. So then I'll go do a cutoff and say I'll cut off a big chunk of this object. Give it a second to think through. So cut off, you know, it's kind of a done operation. I cannot fix it now at all. So that's it. However, voxels, they can be merged together or subtracted from each other really, really easily. So if I have an issue and I want to fix a layer, I have this backup layer here, which maybe I'll go and modify slightly. So I will do a cut through here, and then I will just shift drag it down and it will combine these two together. And voxels are really working, working, working really good like that. 3D code doesn't have such a good robust boolean engine as blender or zbrush so this is kind of your option but i would say this type of subtraction and combining it works differently than a polygonal of booleans and when i press e i have this palette right and what you can do what i did i assigned different hotkeys here for the most using shapes so for example rectangular is number two uh, my regular brush is actually number one. And that allows you to circle through all these shapes really fast on the fly. 
Another cool feature we can find here, it's called on plane tool. It will give you a bunch of options. Essentially, I want to define on plane by right mouse button and I'll click here and that will allow me to hide no deeper than the on plane I have defined or unhide like that. You do have this depth limit. It's kind of like a camera depth limit. It's utterly useless. Use on plane uh, if you need to modify the depth of the height or cut. Or actually, it works for a lot of tools, for a whole, whole bunch of other tools and brushes in 3D code. Another powerful option is called through all volumes. It's pretty much self-explanatory. If I hide, it will hide, it will hide all other layers. All of them, if I have 50 layers, it will hide all those 50. And if I go and unhide, it will also do that. Just be aware it's pretty slow when you run it. And I usually use it sparingly, sparingly uh, depending on the task.